recently I did a little tutorial on using colored leads with Kuretake Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. So today we're going to do a little tutorial on using those same colored leads. They're color eno leads and you can check my description below for a link to draw a really cute succulent and then do a marker illustration. So I grabbed pink and purple, but I actually think a better choice might be blue and green. So I will grab those. And Color Eno is available in eight different colors. And you can get the eight color set on Amazon. Like I said, check my description below. And we're gonna start off by sketching this cute little succulent on some Strathmore um, Smooth Finish Bristol. So I'm gonna zoom way in so you guys can see what I'm doing. And I am starting off with green. But it doesn't matter, you could actually start off with blue and I'm just kind of lightly sketching in my little succulent. And I apologize that it is a little hard to see. We're actually raising money on my Patreon right now to buy some better studio equipment and that includes better lighting. So if you enjoy my videos and you want to help me out, you can become a patron and help support content like this. And that only starts at $2 a month. You can find information on that at patreon.com slash natosoup. So I have drawn so many succulents over the years. I do love drawing them uh, that I'm just kind of using my succulent as an inspiration and I'm kind of just doing my own thing. And I'm actually going to grab a red to do the pot. Actually, red and orange. Let's just use all the colors, huh? Why not? So we'll start with orange. We'll sketch in that little plastic fake terracotta pot. And I always have trouble freehanding ellipses. So since this is just a little demonstration video and not anything too serious, I hope you guys will forgive me for the wonky looking flower pot. I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, so one of the nice things about these color Eno LEDs is that they are very erasable. They're one of the very few colored LEDs, in fact, that are as erasable as they are. So that is a huge plus, and I like them so much better than Cola Erase, but I also happen to prefer mechanical pencils. And these are perfect because they're size seven, and I am a little bit heavy handed, so they work out super duper well for me. So I'm actually gonna go in and use my yellow just to add a hint of yellow. You don't have to do this. If you don't have all the colors, that's okay. And I just really want to inspire you and not put pressure on you. Even using one color can really liven up your art. So don't feel too much pressure. And um, let's see, maybe we'll use some of the darker blue for the undersides of the leaves like this. So where the shadow would be. And you don't really want to spend too, too much time rendering with these because your big focus is going to be finishing up with the alcohol markers. So while we're doing a little bit sketching and adding color here, we're really going to be doing most of our work in marker. And if you're just getting started with alcohol markers, I say skip AliExpress. I think their markers are kind of garbagey. And go for the Blick Studio brush markers. And I have quite a collection of those in addition to Copics and Prismacolors. So here we have our sketch of a cute little succulent. Now we need to grab some scratch paper and do some color swatching. And my particular succulent has a lot of yellow green. Unfortunately, I have a lot of junk in front of my yellow green drawer, so that's gonna be harder to pull. So you guys will just have to be patient with me. Yellow green, come to me. As you guys can see, I'm actually pulling out some Shinhan Twin Touch markers. These used to be cheaper than Copics, but they've actually gotten very hard to find. So I have a few of them, 
but I'm not going to say I'm going to recommend them as well as some regular green. And I'm sure you guys can hear me rattling and rustling in the background. And we're going to go ahead and swatch these colors for color accuracy. You want to make sure, zoom out, you want to make sure that what you're using is actually accurate. That's what the scratch paper is for. And this is just a sample of Bristol sketch paper that, I mean, um, a sample of Strathmore sketch paper that I got for free at like a Dick Blick promotion or maybe a Jerry's promotion years ago. Oh, that's intense. So we're gonna keep lime and spring green. And as I find colors that work for what I want, I start setting them aside. Some of these green yellows are so bright that they really are more yellow. Okay, I can put those away. Now, let's start swatching. And I'm not bothering to tell you guys what colors I'm using because I am using a combination of three different brands. And most alcohol markers play quite nice together. So, you really should consider stretching your wings beyond just Copic or stretching your wings beyond just Blick and getting, wow, I have a lot of colors that are very similar. Um, and getting, and that happens to be all Copic, surprise. Um, <laughs> sorry about that, guys. And consider getting colors from other companies that are not necessarily common with Copic or common with Blick or common with Prisma or common with Shinhan. So I own and part of this is because I review art supplies. Um, but I own like six different brands of alcohol markers that I regularly use. All right, so we'll put that to the side. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. Now there's no need to ink this. We can just go on and get started with uh, our alcohol markers on top of our colored leads. Actually, I always do this to you guys, don't I? I'm always like, oh, let's get started guys. And then, nope had an idea. I do want to add a shadow first, so I'm going to pull my swatch pad back out. Swatch a couple of blue violets, which will provide some contrast and maybe some shadow. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out just a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing. So you see, I'm not even bothering to ink. I am just directly applying my, ooh, dropping stuff. Directly applying my alcohol ink to my paper. I grabbed the wrong color. I was hoping for something lighter. I do try to avoid using the colorless blender. Whatever, I'll grab a next B. And I'll just go ahead also and add those shade colors first. And that way, as I apply the subsequent layers on top, they'll blend out really nice. But you can see that the colored LEDs are already working quite nicely with the alcohol marker. It influences it without sort of taking over. Apply that to our succulent as well. And you guys might remember that I have a tutorial on colored LEDs and monochromatic illustrations. So we use two markers in those illustrations. And you can really get a pretty large range just by using the color LED with like one color as we're doing for right now. All right, so we've applied a base coat of BB31 in Copic. So just go ahead and set that aside. And we're going to go ahead and pick a middle green and get started. And whenever I'm doing these little succulent illustrations, I tend to work back and forth between several colors in order to get the sort of blending effects that I want. And I also try to keep the colors that I'm using in order. 
That makes it easier for me to grab the right color since I went to all the trouble of swatching these. It would be a shame after all that swatching to grab the wrong color, right? So you wanna keep them in order. And we'll blend out a bit with a wax screen. And if I get a bit quiet, I apologize. A lot of this is just going to be sort of back and forth between two or three colors. Just building up colors, building up contrast, building up form. I don't want every layer to cover a little less than the layer prior to it. And we're working on a thicker paper, um, mostly because that's my preference. I prefer using my alcohol markers on Bristol papers because they are more absorbent. So they'll hold some of that alcohol solution in the paper fibers a little bit longer. You can get a little bit smoother blends. Of course, everybody has their preference and I do encourage you to experiment and to find out what yours is. Don't just rely on what I tell you. And you guys can also still see some of the line work, but a lot of it has gotten kind of moved and shifted with the alcohol marker. It's gotten blended in to the paper. So if you want sort of a lineless marker style, this would be the way to go about doing it. And in a later tutorial, I will demonstrate how you can use this to draw or render people as well. And so far we've really just been going back and forth with two colors. We did put down a yellow green to begin with but a lot of the work we're doing right now is with this particular uh, very, very light green. It's sort of a blending green. It's G20 and G43. But you could use any comparable color from any other marker company. Now, one of the complaints I get the most is that people do have a harder time because I work so small seeing what I'm doing. So I'll zoom in for you guys. And I'm pretty much just dual, bleh, dual wielding two markers trying to build up some color. So next up we're going to introduce a slightly darker greenier green. And when you're doing foliage or greenery in general, you want to begin with what's closest to your light source or closest to your viewer. You want to do that with green yellows or just outright yellows. And what is more in shadow, you want it to be more green and blue-green. I actually wrote about that quite a lot recently in a blog post about rendering foliage that you guys can read as part of my watercolor basic series. There's a lot in common though between watercolor and alcohol marker. You can read that at natosoup.blogspot.com. Just check out my watercolor basics hub page. And that is located on the left-hand sidebar. I'm not even going to blend that out because the paper is so saturated that it's going to do a lot of that blending for me. I may have to blend this uh, Blick Studio Bright Green out with Willow G24, just because it is a very blue, it's a little bluer than I expected, which is gonna be great in certain areas, but it's a little intense in others. So I find it's helpful just to blend back with the last color you used. It gives you a bit of a smoother gradient between the two colors. I sort of use a variety of marker strokes, which I find when I'm doing marker studies like this gives me a better result. Now before I get too invested, I'm going to swing on back by with BV, let's see. Not BB31. Let's go with BB02 and that blender marker. 
And we're just going to add a little bit of shading to our background just to make it look more like an inhabited space. So it's less like object on paper. And we're gonna swing back in with 067 Bright Green in Blick Studio Brush Marker. I love how people are calling these a Copic dupe. It's like they've never heard a store brand before. And didn't you guys grow up eating great value? Just add some details here and there. And then finally, G64. And I'm actually gonna blend that back with Willow. And then blend Willow back. Where did I put pistachio? There we go. With pistachio on some of these lower leaves. There we go. Sorry about that. I would say y'all should just holler whenever I get off frame, but I think it would be a little late for that. And you do, if you're not working with inks, you do have to be a little bit cleaner in how you handle things um, because it's going to be, your edges are gonna be a lot more noticeable or you need to embrace your messiness. You can't go halfway with either. And that takes a, a fair bit of practice. So I can understand if it's something you struggle with. It's something I also struggle with because I don't really have the patience to be neat and tidy in terms of art. But I also just don't have the heart, I guess, to be really sloppy. Maybe I just don't have the, the, the sort of artist's eye to get away with being sloppy. That could be what's going on. All right, I think that is pretty good since we're really just doing a little bit of sketching and just want to demonstrate a technique to you guys. So I'm gonna clean those up and pick the colors I want for my terracotta pot. So I'll be right back. All right, so I have selected some oranges and browns and reds that I feel like might work. But as always, we have to swatch to figure that out. And I'm actually not looking for too, too many colors, so I might hit what I'm looking for, oh, I'm not even on camera. Let me zoom out. Might hit what I'm looking for fairly quickly. Did a pretty good job of selecting colors, I think. Yeah. So I'm gonna put these away and I'll get back to you guys. All right, so we've got those colors selected and in order. I'm going to begin with YR18 Sanguine. And I'm going to try, we'll see. Sometimes I like to do an all over color application as you guys have heard in other tutorials. And then sometimes for sketching, I try to keep certain colors as only local colors, just to add some excitement and to get a little bit of practice doing things in a different way. Now, when I do opt to do it all over, it is because um, it'll help influence the other colors. It'll help marry the other colors together. When I choose to do it as local color, it's because I am working with other colors that are similar enough, as is this case with what I'm working with right now. But you can see the difference between the color that has been on top of Sanguine, and this is actually just brown, it's a Copic Chow. And I think I've said this before, but the reason I don't have more Copic Chows is I already established quite a Copic collection um, by the time Copic had introduced their Chows. And what I want to say is like 2012 is when Chows came out in America. I can't say for when they came out in Japan. Um, and I already really started my collection. I had all my basic colors, which is what I would recommend you get chows for. And I was already starting to collect markers by other companies. 
right. So we're gonna use Sanguine to blend out into brown. Probably should have done an all over color. I can kind of amend that by going over it now. It's gonna knock the brown back a little bit. It's going to add some saturation because brown is a little less saturated than I thought it would be. So I can leave brown as it is in the shadows. And I can also blend it out a little bit with brown again. So just working back and forth between my colors. Since there are no harsh blends on this pot, I'm going to try and keep most of my color transitions fairly um, soft. And I'll give that a chance to dry. All right, that's had a little bit of a chance to dry. So I'm going to go ahead and use my darkest color to sketch in sort of the delineation of the lip of the pot. And you guys can really see how I have a problem with elliptical shapes. It's just difficult for me. Don't have a personal problem. I just have difficulty drawing them myself. And now I need to do the gravel that is inside the pot. So I want some really dark browns. Of course, whenever you're dealing with something that has a variety of color, I find it helps to go ahead and grab a really light version of the dark color you're going to put down put that in place first and then let it dry fully. Because we're not really looking for soft blends here, we're looking for some striking transitions, but we do want the dirt to look like it belongs. So I'll let that dry. All right, that's had a chance to dry. So now I'm going to go in and sort of sketch the vermiculite in the soil. That's those like white styrofoam sort of beads. And I could have sketched that with a colored lead if I'd wanted. There's no reason why you can't do that. And I'm gonna let that layer dry as well. And we're gonna go ahead and use that same color the same darker brown, which is E59 Walnut, in case you're curious, to add another layer of brown to the soil. We're trying to build the soil up color-wise. And while we're here, I'm gonna go back in with BV20, which was the blue violet I used to add some shadow to the environment. I'm just adding a little bit more, cleaning it up a bit so it looks intentional and not too messy. And that's really what you want when you're working with any sort of realistic media, is you want things to look intentional. And then I'm just going to add the darkest color, dark bark, just here and there. I know in the real pot, it's actually much darker but it's all about trying to find a balance in your work. So I hope you guys found this quick little tutorial on using colored LEDs with alcohol markers to be helpful. I hope you found it to be informative and I hope you found it inspiring. I hope you will give it a shot in your own work. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please let me know by leaving a like. If you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like, me to, like to see me review other colored LEDs, I've done that in the past, but I can do that again. Let me know that as well. If you enjoy content like this and would like to help make sure that there is more in the future, please check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash soup. My backers did request that I do more alcohol marker tutorials and reviews, so I'm trying to make that um, 
a focus more so on this channel since they do enjoy it. If you would like to help them with that goal, just $2 a month will get you access to all sorts of early access and backer exclusive goodies, including mini comics, art assets, and digital copies of 7-inch Care Volume 1. So head on over to patreon.com slash for information on how to join me as an art nerd. So in my next tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to do, how to handle people with colored leads and alcohol markers. So I hope to see you then. Bye guys.